The Israel Museum in Jerusalem recently reopened after an extensive three-year redesign of its collections and its 20-acre campus on Capitol Hill, across from the Knesset. From its start in 1965, the museum has strived to show the strong connections between its three main wings, archaeology, fine arts, and Jewish art and life. And over the last three years, in a way to my amazement, we have accomplished here a transformative change to the museum, which we hope has actually brought out the potential of its original vision. And how would Snyder describe what makes the museum, Israel's preeminent cultural institution, so unique? At the heart of Israel, at the center of the universe, there's something very special about coming here to see not just the culture of the region, from the beginning of time to today. But the rest of world culture all synthesized together in a place which is really meant to be about intercultural connection. The renovation has doubled the museum's gallery space, which now shows about 8,000 objects out of its total collection of half a million. These 8,000 key objects take the visitor on a unique journey through time. The way that the galleries are ordered now actually gives you the opportunity to begin in archaeology and prehistory a million and a half years ago. And then we move in a kind of seamless way to contemporary art of yesterday. The Jewish Art and Life Wing currently has a beautiful exhibit of Hanukkah menorahs from around the world. The Fine Arts Wing shows works by many masters of modern art. Of course, it also showcases the work of Israeli artists, who Snyder says no longer feel beholden to being, quote, Israeli artists, but to express themselves in a more global way. What's happened in, in the last 10 or 12 years is that after passing the age of 50, it seemed that Israel had reached a certain age and artists could disconnect themselves from the immediacy of that history, begin to be a little more reflective about that history, take themselves a little less seriously, and really become quite active on the international landscape. Two world-class artists were invited to make site-specific objects, especially for the museum. Anish Kapoor, who was born in India but whose mother is Jewish, made a sculpture which uniquely uses the special light of the Capitol Hill top. It's a five meter high, a uh, five meter in diameter, hourglass shaped, polished stainless steel work that stands at the crest of our site. It's called Turning the World Upside Down Jerusalem because in fact what the work does is exactly that. As you approach it, it inverts the Jerusalem sky which is straight ahead of you and the built landscape of the museum and what surrounds it above you. The second work, by Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson, is a painting that also embraces the properties of light. He created a painting that's more than 50 feet long that actually consists of over 300 paintings, each approximately two inches wide, each reflecting the next gradation of color in the spectrum that the human eye can perceive and that can be ground in oil pigment. Maybe more than in most other urban museums around the world, Snyder wants his visitors' experience to include, inside and outside the museum, an experience of beauty. To come to a place where you feel the power of beauty is something quite important. This is Harvey Stein reporting from Jerusalem.